Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Last episode, I got my... my face back, right? Yeah, I got my face back, but I wasn't able to get my name back just yet because I need an indulgence from the son's daughter. And I can do that once every two weeks, I think. And each time I do it, I have like a 20% chance to actually get the indulgence. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's very, very, very important that I get my name back because that will give me five mirrors back. And the five mirrors are what are preventing me from putting on the retro nut and my mine thing. Although I do wonder, could I switch to somebody who'd give me more mirrors? I've already got plus 10 mirrors. Oh, and then plus 10 mirrors here. Damn. I could get rid of the hearts, but no one else is going to give me mirrors there. No. I could get plus one mirrors by switching to the useless cat. But, what are my mirrors at right now? 72? Right? I think it's 72. Anyway, it's not one away from 75, so... That would not do anything. Yeah, I need my name back. Well, I have to wait about two weeks. I figure... I don't really have any other business here in the Blue Kingdom at the moment. Let's head over here and explore the one last significant unexplored area. It's pretty small. I don't think I'm going to find anything, but eh, let's do it. I think I did explore that area once right before I got killed by a bunch of spearfers getting cornered in there. And then when I reloaded, it undid the revealing of the map there. But let's explore it properly. So I'm expecting to see at least a couple spearfers here. Seemed like a little spear for Cubby last time. Yep, there's one. Shoot again, meant to explode the first one. Just keep my distance and I'll be fine. One down. I saw the lights of another one. Loot the plundered hall. Success. It gives me some immaculate souls. Nice.
That should do it. I hope. Oh, no. Damn it. Oh, still did it. Hmm. Just to be super safe, let's scrap the engine. Just to get back to full health. Mourn the dead. That'll that will reduce my terror. I think by five percent. Yeah. I think this corner is where I got caught in and killed. Not a good place to be when missiles and machine gun fire are bearing down on you from a spear for... Well, that's it. Yeah, that is all of the Blue Kingdom explored, truly. Anything of significance, anyway. Made a bunch of money. And now I'm back at the Shadow of the Sun. It's been about two weeks, so we should be able to petition for an indulgence again. I hope I roll high, because I only have two moments of inspiration left. Plead for an indulgence. 28% chance. <sighs> Well, at least we'll get a testament of the feather. It's been another two weeks. I'm praying that this works. This is my last moment of inspiration. Please. 28% chance of success. Thank God. Huh. <sighs> When you try to speak to the son's daughter, you find that you're not using words. Concepts are communicated, yes. Shapes manifest in the air. The tapestry of a hundred meanings is whittled down until only one remains. Your arguments are sound, says the son's daughter. You suspect she's not using words either. A measure of translation is taking place. I will offer you a word of support in certain matters. Ah... <sighs> Also, Testament of the Feather, please. Thank you. Let's reclaim my name. A name's not as simple as a face, says the Quartermaster. It can only be returned if you have permission from the son's daughter herself. A name cannot be returned, but it can be exchanged or taken. By order of the highest representatives of the Sapphire King himself, you have been granted the name of the Jaded Quartermaster. The nameless thing protests. I have many names to trade, the nameless one before you whines. All the names of all the dead, famous names, forbidden names, secret and hideous and profound. No, says the jaded quartermaster, only one name will do. In exchange, then, mutters the nameless thing. It scribbles a contract on a tablet of wax and you sign. Your name is returned, and it is the jaded quartermaster once more. All right. Ah, I have my five mirrors back. Well, I'm done with the Blue Kingdom now, so I'm going to head back to the Reach. I do have a problem, though. My tear is 97%. If I can get through the relay, though, I think that usually reduces my tear by a bit, and I should be fine. Question is, do I have everything I need to get through here? Because I have, like, four dining with the dead. I forgot what I need to pay my way. I have a bunch of casks of Navartine gemstones, so... Hopefully we're okay. Let's see, I think I, I think it's four. One thing of gemstones. We'll reduce it by three. Vision of the heavens. Let's just use a Searing Enigma. That'll just 
automatically completely get it down to zero. I have 15 of them. Please let me travel to the Reach. My terror went down by like 3%. Uh, it should be fine, because I think once I hit the relay, or not the relay, once I hit uh, New Winchester, that should reduce my terror significantly. Okay, it just hit 98%, which is really freaking me out. I'm so close. Come on. Come on. I'm scared. Still 98. Still 98. Okay, we should be fine. Ah. Ah. Down to 73. On my way to Albion, because I believe we have to do something in London. I don't actually remember what. But on the way there, stopping at Port Prosper because we can drop off the Bleak Industrialist's Lover. Return the lost love. She has been sealed in a casket to keep her safe from starlight. You transfer her to the industrialist's cellar. You impress upon him the importance of never laying eyes on her, or even hearing her voice. Then what is the point, he snarls. How can I... He stops, a wild light in his eyes. He rushes to fetch a pen and paper. Moments later, he shoves a scribbled love letter under the cellar door. It's returned with new writing on the back. As he reads the reply, the industrialist's heavily lined face smooths out. His smile is like sunrise after six months of winter. He's so ecstatic that he barely listens while you explain the year and a half, a year and a day time limit. You may return to pick up the lost love in nine months. If you take longer than a year and a day, you will be too late. I might finish the game before that time's even up, um, but let me calculate nine months so I know exactly when I can start picking them up. Okay, so I can pick them up starting the 4th of September, 1912, and I need to make sure I get them back by the 18th of October, 1912. At London and Albion now. Yeah, there's actually two things to do here. <clears throat> One is to hand in a new law, the Throne of Hours. You know, the whole ceremonial tearing it thing. Awesome. Cool. Didn't do much of anything, but... <laughs> um, but this is the more important thing. Present a boulderized poem to storages. Um, we got this from Caduceus. Remember that person who wanted us to take the poems here because I, I think they wouldn't take him seriously, like the publisher here, storages. So they wanted me to take it to them for them. The ubulant decadence work is uh, strong stuff. You'll need to doctor it to get it past the publisher. 82% chance of success. Damn. Mr. Storage doesn't bother to take the poem into his office, but reads the entire thing in front of you. After the first few stanzas, he turns an exciting shade of red. Captain, he says. Cousins is not an appropriate rhyme for bosoms. This is the extent of his comment. Well... I guess I need to go back to Caduceus and uh, see if they have another poem. <laughs> I don't know. Just visited the most serene mausoleum, both to reduce my terror and also because I'm kind of desperately looking for Langley's lost lover. Trying to think of places that might have them. I was thinking maybe the Deathless at the most serene mausoleum. That's still a possibility, but I just failed pretty much every time I tried to talk to the Deathless. So... <laughs> I'm going to have to come back here later with some literature, because that allows me to kind of bypass the wait and just try to talk with them instantly. So there's that. 
um, there's like the worker at the home bureau that I want to talk to. Uh, I'm thinking I should probably check the person who dresses us at Whirlberry Juxta Mare. I have some vague memory of them. I'm not sure if I went to these places after. Like, if I, I might have been to these places after going to Langley Hall. I'm not sure. I feel like I haven't been back to Albion since the Langley Hall thing, so I kind of want to check pretty much everywhere. Like, Perdurance? Possibility Royal Society? Maybe Clockwork Sun? Eh, possibly? Anyway, while I'm going around searching for Langley's lover, I thought... Let's explore the very fringes of Albion just a little bit more. Because there's a lot of places like this where there's just little unexplored bits. Probably nothing significant in them, but who knows? Investigate the bodies. Failure on a 92% chance. Got an uncanny specimen. Something back here. See below us. Ah, just a broken ship. The Spellbinder. Stripper for repairs. Back to full health. Let's go check up here. A little bit of darkness. Oh, look at that submerged face of a statue. Okay, looks like that's it. Ah, okay, so there's actually something new here at the Quiet Sea. Now that we finished with the other person that we thought might have been Langley's lover but wasn't, they were like a representative of... I forgot which of the three cults. But now that we're done with that, it looks like we can talk with somebody else from a different cult? I think it's a different cult. It's definitely a different person. I'm having a conversation with a jolly anchorite. So let me just read this. The man lowers his hood to reveal a scarred and ruddy face. His eyes twinkle like falling suns. We've been watching from the flotilla. We all agree your offering was worthy. Worthy to seek the names of the saints with us. If you wanted to learn a truth of the gate, that is. He produces a battered flask from his cloak. I've taken the liberty of bringing the unguent, should you wish to join us. Ask about the cult of the sanctified. Who are these people and what do they want with you? We are but humble acolytes of the saints. They came among us long ago, before we departed for the skies in our folly. Most abandoned them, but we pray to let them know that not all have forgotten their names. The jolly anchorite sighs, gazing out on the mists. Perhaps they'll even rejoin us, if enough learn their names and recite them here at the gate. So, the saints, I think they're talking about the messengers, because remember that the body... 
of that huge messenger back in the reach around all that like crackly ice. It's actually hidden under the ice and I had to drill through it. That was called the Grave of the Silent Saint. Accept and be anointed in the cult of the sanctified. First you must learn words and stuff your mouth full of them. They shall prepare you to know the names. I anoint your head with chrism and press my thumb to your lips, for you are hungry for sacral flesh. You briefly taste dead skin and salt. In the beginning was the word, and the word was made writing. The Lord said, Go forth and multiply. Sin flourishes in silence, but is washed away by the multiplication of words. Open. Wider, please. Parchment is stuffed into your mouth. The jolly anchorite beams. Not too hard, was it? You've learned the first name and met our saint of inks. Our brethren are just this way. You've been initiated into the sanctified, provide fuel and supplies for a feast. Well, that's easy. So yeah, before we had to give the other person five ministry approved literature. Thankfully, it sounds like I don't need that. You are known to the mystics at the gate. What about the silent mystic? Ask her for a secret of the Avid Horizon. You've believed so much to learn the ways of the gate. We haven't done that much. We've been here for like five minutes. Silent Mystic laughs and cups your jaw in her hands. Shall I lie to you? Um, we have seen this before. Yeah, we've seen that before. Speak with the Jolly Anchorite. Oh, that's a nasty picture. The Jolly Anchorite has made his home in a huge shell dredged from the depths of the sea. He roars as you approach. Come to receive more learning. If you wish to know our mysteries, you must learn the names of the saints. As you progress on our rituals, the names shall be revealed to you. He claps you heartily on the back. Very few know all the names. I myself have lost some of them. Oh, I can't do this yet? Bring me fire for the hearth and a feast for the devouring. Two supplies, two fuel. There are candles lit for you and wine spilled for you and meat carved for you. I think... I think that means I need to do this whole thing where I kind of gain some of their favor. Yeah, so where do I sleep? Uh, the Sanctified. The Sanctified would be the Cozy Birth? Yes, that did it. Let's sing. Um, of life. The riot and revel of us at the Sanctified? Yes. Give a confession. Despair, not mm, sentiment. Sometimes your heart goes heavy. Is that sanctified? No, that's the displeased. What will I do with the confessions? Mm, betray it. A secret given only has power if used. Is that the sanctified? No, that's the displeased again. Okay, the feast. This one's easy. With gusto. Sanctified. Here we go. There are candles lit for you, wine spilled for you, meat cart for you. Okay, that should do it. Raw meats, ripe and red. The jolly anchorite's chin is scarlet with juices. His face is even ruddier. No, no wine. Not yet. Here, throw another skewer on the flame. His cabin is smoky from the smoldering meat. There, the saint on the pyre, and the saint of flesh. And for my last trick, he produces an apple green as a leaf from Trader's Wood, and proceeds to munch heartily. I'll throw this one in for free. The 
Paredesal Saint. Here, take a bite. Gain favor with the sanctified and the displeased? To learn the names of the lost saints to advance. Wait, why also the displeased? Where will you find the names of the missing saints? Jolly Anchorite could stand to be a little less gnomic, surely. The Jolly Anchorite raises his great head and fixes you with a grief-stricken look. I must ask you to commit treachery, though for a good cause. Gain the trust of one of the other cults. One of their number will remember the names. The displeased, I would suspect. One of their number was once one of ours. She earned her place with the displeased through the selling of our secrets. He turns away. Ah, so that's why. Unlocked when you have the names of the missing saints. Okay. Alright, I can do that. Um, let me just leave entirely. Because it's getting real laggy. Okay, the displeased. Return O. Hmm. Shit. Well, I just kind of screwed myself, didn't I? All right. I'll come back later. What was that noise? Score and fluke. Oh shit. Why are you shooting me? I'm trying to help you, sort of. I mean, I'm gonna try to kill it right afterwards. <laughs> A searing enigma. Harvest souls. That's basically just loot, you know, for money. I don't know. Tear off a trophy for terror, I guess. It <laughs> failed anyway. <laughs> Alright. There you are. Scavenge for birds. Back to full health. Remember the cult that I joined at Whirlberry Juxta Mare? I didn't want to participate in the ritual that they invited me to because it involves cannibalism, but you know what? I've eaten humans like three times now, I think, so what the hell? Oop. Let's partake in the ritual and observe. 100% chance of success. <laughs> Another bacchanal to attend, more flesh to taste. What can you learn by participating? Unpleasant repast. The cultists in attendance are less effervescent than those in the church, more reserved, possessed of a reverent uneasiness. They make space for you in their midst, permitting access to a cauldron stinking of salt. Chew but don't swallow, warns a robed cultist. You're given a mouthful of something tensile, reminiscent of sinew boiled to imperviousness. You gnaw on the lump as you've been told. It's nothing worse than other meals you've consumed. Soon there is nothing but a length of black bone. You spit it out. The jag of calcium is quietly taken away. The group disbands. Whatever happened is over. Otherworldly artifact. I've just come across the storm that speaks, and I can do something with it that I've never been able to do before. Read a word the lightning wrote. I can do it now because I have to have given the clerk of sevens the sigils she requested. The lightning flickers and scrawls, 
Its afterimages remind you of the engravings on an otherworldly artifact you discovered on your travels. You will always gain something, but at what cost? Fixing the artifact to your engine's headlight, you project a complex pattern of light onto the clouds. The lightning answers. A colossal knot of violent, violet light stabs through the sky. A sigil of fire. The thunder roars. Your crew wail and shriek. One stoker's hair bursts into flame. Another clutches at her seared eyes. The sigil's meaning is branded into your mind. The erroneous assumption that there will be a tomorrow. We've seen this before, but I definitely didn't turn in the sigil quest and then do this, right? I only did that pretty recently. Maybe there's another way to get here. Lost two crew. Sorry. Um, basically we got a searing enigma. Is the upside. Well, add that on to the pile. Got 16 of them. 